Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. This episode might get cheesy. These cheese filled naans are super rich and delicious. If you're on a diet, look away right now. I don't care for diets, I eat what I want. And if you want to see how these are made, keep watching. The recipe is quite similar to my keema naan, which was stuffed with meat and made the same way. And if you would like to see that video, click the link in the top right corner. But let's get on with the cheese naan. And as always, you'll find the full recipe with all the details down in the description box. But first let's see what equipment we need. You'll need a pan, because this bread is cooked in a pan. You'll need a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, a spatula and a rolling pin. Now for the ingredients, strong white bread flour, you need some milk, yeast, salt, sugar, some oil, yogurt and various cheeses and herbs for the filling. So let's begin. Get your bowl, add your milk, and my kitchen is quite warm so I'm using cold milk from the fridge. Then add your yeast, add the salt and the sugar and add the oil. Now in it with the yogurt, which is also cold, from the fridge and then give it all a good mix. You want to dissolve the sugar crystals. Now for the last ingredient, the flour. Now grab your dough scraper and give it all a good mix. You want to mix the dough until it's one whole piece while it's still in the bowl. And if the scraper isn't doing the job, continue on by hand. And once it's all mixed up, tip it out on the table and we can start kneading it. This dough is not very sticky, so I'm going to use a regular kneading method. Press down and forwards with the heel of my right hand, then using the fingers of my left hand, I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand, then turn and repeat. Once you've done this a few times, it will become a fluent motion and it will not take more than 5-7 to seven minutes. And just a few minutes later, the dough is nice and smooth. We can get it in the bowl for its first proof and always take the temperature. 25 to 26 degrees Celsius is just about right for this. Now cover it up and we'll leave it to ferment for around 45 minutes. And now pretend that I didn't forget to film time lapse. Magically the dough is puffed up. Now we need to give it a fold. Folding is important because it equalizes temperature in the dough. It will create extra layers in the gluten structure and it will also degas the dough. To perform a fold, place your dough smooth side down on the table, flatten it out, then fold the edges over the middle, going around in a circle till reach point where it started. Then flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table, then pinch the bottom together, and back in the bowl it goes, smooth side pointing up, then cover it up again, and we'll leave it to proof for another 45 minutes. And this time actually remember to film time lapse. You can see the dough puffing up nicely. It has definitely doubled in size, now it's ready to be divided. I would suggest using scales for this. If you're making two pieces of dough, it's quite easy to eyeball it, just cut it in half without weighing it. When you're making four, you want to be consistent. So just weigh your piece of dough, divide the total amount by four, and using your scraper, cut them down to size. After dividing, we need to pre-shape these dough pieces. Because they now consist of many little pieces of dough, we need to hide them and make them whole again. So that's why the pre-shaping step is necessary. Pre-shape your dough, place it smooth side down, then fold the edges over the middle, going around in a circle until it reaches the point where it started. Tighten it against the table, pinch the bottom together, and back on the table it goes, smooth side pointing up. Now we need to let them ferment for one more hour after pre-shaping. And let's just pretend that I didn't forget to film the time lapse again. Ugh, we give up. Now once your dough balls are doubled in size, we can do the fun part, fill them with cheese. And you can use any cheese that you like. I have a mix of cheddar, American cheese, parsley and garlic here. We'll use just a tiny amount of flour to flatten the dough pieces out so they don't stick to the table. And using your hands, flatten it. You can also stretch it. You don't have to stretch it too much. It doesn't have to be very big. Now grab a quarter of your filling, press it together so it's easier to handle and place it right into the middle of the dough. And now we'll do a similar motion to the pre-shaping. As you can see, I'm stretching the side over the middle and going around in a circle until I reach the point where I started. Then just pinch the seams together. We don't want any cheese coming out during cooking. And once you've sealed it up, you can flatten it a little bit and that's your dough ready. And then just continue on with the other three. Make sure you press the cheese together. If it's too loose, it'll be difficult to fill the dough. Now these breads are quite thick right now. 
And if we try to roll them out, they might resist and tear. So we need to let them relax. So just cover them up and rest them for 15 minutes. During resting, the gluten will relax and make it a lot easier for us to roll them out. And the dough will get another quick chance to puff up and ferment. And that's it, we are ready for the final step before cooking. This is where the rolling pin comes in. And use a little bit of flour. You don't want the dough sticking to the table as you are rolling it. And remember to always add the flour bit by bit. It's always easier to add a little bit more than to take off. So what I like to do is begin with my hands, rest the dough out with my fingers and only then come in with a rolling pin. Now watch the rolling pin as I'm using it. I am not rolling it to the edge. There might be some air bubbles inside the bread, so if you roll it right to the edge, you might pop them, and then all your cheese will come out. And these breads don't have to be too thin, about one and a half centimeters, or half an inch will do. And if you don't have a rolling pin, you could actually even press these out by hand. But once they're all done, we can get them over to the pan and start cooking. And make sure your pan is nice and hot, medium to high heat, get plenty of oil in there, and don't worry about using a lot of oil, the bread's not going to absorb that much. These breads will take around 5-6 to six minutes, I suggest flipping them every minute or so. The yellow colour on the dough, at the moment, is from the rapeseed oil that I'm using, but you could use any oil that you like. Now keep cooking them, keep flipping them, until they're nicely golden brown on both sides, and crispy. And that's your cheesy naan. Quite simple, right? And these will obviously best be enjoyed while still warm. You want the cheese to be soft and stretchy inside. Forget about counting calories on these ones. You'll be in a cheese coma for two hours after eating it. But it's well worth it. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down in comments. Subscribe to my channel for bread baking videos every Wednesday and Sunday. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.